Greetings, I'm Epictetus and this is Epic Tech. And today we are taking a look at the new and improved version of Tim. Now, if you have not yet seen the old version of Tim, then don't worry. We're just going to be talking about Tim in general. Now, that's Taladin's Inventory Manager and one of the best scripts ever written in the history of mankind. I made this little world here a while ago for the full Tim guide. And if you haven't already seen it, I highly recommend watching that after watching this video. This video is going to cover what's changed since that version, not the entire script. For the most part, everything is exactly the same as it was before, but just with a few improvements that unfortunately made some changes that are a little confusing. So if you've never used Tim before, watch this video and then watch the older video, which I will link. If you have watched the older video already, don't worry about it. Like I said, this is going to cover everything that's changed. The first thing we're going to need to do is actually upgrade Tim. If you've never installed a script before and you've never installed Tim before, then make sure and watch the instructions in the other video. It's a lot more in depth, but if you, if you're used to installing scripts or you're just upgrading from the old version or whatnot, this is what you're going to want to do in your programmable block, hit edit, browse the workshop, find Taladin's inventory manager and double click it. It'll load the new version over top of the old version. Then it's the same as normal check code. Okay. Remember an exit. Now, if you had Tim installed before, you'll notice a couple of changes immediately. For example, your refineries now, instead of saying Tim or we'll say Tim auto. And that's because refineries are much more efficiently uh, managed now. Same with assemblers. Assemblers before had to be individually configured. Let's find my, there we go. They'd be individually configured per component. And now they don't, they can actually handle all components. Tim can do the entire process. So you can see that Tim already has figured out that we don't have enough solar cells. And right here, it's saying that it is currently processing solar cells without doing anything because this used to be configured to only handle steel plates. Now it can process anything it wants. And Tim will basically keep on telling this assembler to make things until we have everything or we run out of components necessary. The other thing you'll notice that ch is changed is the way that screens are set up. And again, if you already had Tim configured before, this will automatically get converted for you. It used to be that you would just say Tim or like this. But you now, in order to have an inventory screen, you have to type in inven colon. And that works with everything. Also, there are some bonuses. So this screen over here is configured as Tim inven physical gun object. And that's in order to get all of the weapons and tools. While this one here is configured just to show oxygen bottles. We can now actually just remove the tag after the word, word inven or just type inven and we can get a complete list of everything. Now you'll notice that it actually can't fit everything on the screen by default. You can shrink the font size even further, but eventually it becomes unreadable and Tim doesn't like that. So he automatically resizes it to a minimum of 0.5. However, we can use our old technique from the previous version of span and get it to fit across two screens. So now you find that you actually have almost <laughs> everything able to fit. This is really handy when you need to know the name of something. For example, what is, what are these ammo magazines called? What 
is the name of a hydrogen bottle. Well, it's a, it's a hydrogen bottle. That's pretty easy. But some of them are a little bit more complicated, like angle grinder three item. So normally you don't want to have every single thing in the entire list, but in a pinch, it can be kind of handy. Personally, I like to use this to do something like this. I'll go in and say inven or inven ingot. Whoops, no space. And I can have or and ingots on a single screen. And it turns out to be about the same amount as components. Oh, by the way, if it ends up being too small on the screen, that's because Tim will increase size and decrease size within a range, but it assumes you want some control over size. If you make it way too big, it'll shrink it until it fits on the screen. So there we go. These end up being right around the same size. So everything you really need most of the time can be found on just two screens. Now in the original video, we talked about the debug panel. Now the debug panel is actually even more helpful now. So let's do that. And I'm gonna shrink the text on here. That should be a good number right there. So we can take a quick look and see that we have a panel up there, up at the top here, that says invalid panel attribute oxygen bottle. Well, let's go over and figure out which one that is. Oh, well, this one right here. But the, th the fact that we're spanning means that this isn't even necessary. So that's not a big deal. That should get fixed. There we go. And inf insufficient component to satisfy these various different containers. So it's really trying to make those. Let's give it a little bit of an advantage. Not all of the assemblers are set up for Tim to use. So we can really quickly just throw Tim Auto on all of these. And now all three of them will be able to be processed by Tim. Ah, <laughs> so I just was a little confused by what was going on. And then I realized that this panel down here never got reconfigured to show anything of use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the contents by hand. There we go. Should have been looking over here the whole time. So you can see we've got all three assemblers now working. And they're kind of bouncing around, working on various different things. And once they get to the point where there's enough of each one, then you'll see these status lines disappear one by one. Another thing to now keep an eye on is the percent load. You can see that it says 27% load, 28% load, that kind of thing. Um, if that gets to 100%, the script will crash and you'll have to go and recompile it. And that's not a good thing. In order to fix that, you can very easily on the programmable block under argument, type in cycle equals in a number between one and 11. So cycle equals five means that it will break up its entire process into five individual cycles. And we can see that on the status panel over here. So you can see it's completing cycle two, cycle three, cycle four, and the percent load is much lower. For larger bases, is going to basically be necessary. Keep in mind that this cycle equals five will only work if the timer block was configured properly. So if we go back to the timer block and set up actions, when you add in your programmable block, you'll have two options. There's run and run with default argument. And if you click run, it asks you what argument and you can hit confirm. If you do that, then it will always be running with a blank argument. However, if you choose run with default argument, then it uses the default argument that's in the programmable block, this right here. It does make the status panel a little difficult to follow because it's changing every second. 
and trying to read something in less than a second is not always easy. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back to cycle equals one, which is the default. I don't even have to type cycle equals one. And they might find it interesting. I just had a little issue with my refineries where Tim wasn't managing them at all. And I realized they were all off. I must have turned them off at some point in time and didn't realize it. But now the refineries are also being managed. So it's creating cobalt as fast as it can, as well as nickel in order to satisfy the needs of the rest of the stuff here, etc., etc. Keep in mind, by the way, that if you don't like the fact that your assemblers and your refineries are just taking anything, you can still actually force them to only take to only manage certain things. So I can type in auto colon steel plate and that refinery will only process steel plate, but it will only pro process it when it's below quota. So you can see it's not making steel plate, but it's not using that assembler for anything else. And the same thing can be done with refineries in the exact same way. So for example, if you had a refinery that you only wanted to process gold because it was very hard to come across and you've placed a whole bunch of efficiency modules on it, you could do that. And then things like iron, which you have in large quantities, you just want it to process quickly so you put speed modules on it, no big deal. So other than a whole bunch of bug fixes and efficiency improvements and that kind of thing, that's about all there is new in this version. So if you'd like, you can jump back over to my official Tim guide and watch any section of that one, and you'll find that it should be accurate unless I said something. Yeah, you get the idea. But before we go, I've had a lot of requests to show off some of the little techniques that I use when um, setting up Tim. For example, one thing that I like to do is create something called a basics container. It's really common to find yourself needing a tool or some parts and having to kind of run around and look for those things. So what I'll do is I'll actually make a cargo, which I personally call basics. I just call it basics cargo like that. And I'll have it keep, well, all the basics that I need. For example, I want to have a welder, a grinder, and a drill available no matter where I am. Partially because I don't always carry a drill with me unless I'm actually drilling. But every once in a while I do need one. You get the idea. And we just learned the names a moment ago. So welder three item, and it should auto complete. You can see it up at the top there and if it's correct. And that looks like it's right. The thing that always throws me is the angle grinder. I never really think about it, but it is actually the angle grinder item, not just the grinder item. And then it's hand drill. I also like to keep when I'm on the surface of a planet, at least hydrogen bottles, but sometimes oxygen bottles. So if I do hydrogen bottle, and I think two would be good to keep in there at all points in time. And then everything needed to start construction on something. Steel plates. I'll take a hundred of those. Interior plates. Girders. Construction components. So that's my basics cargo. And most of the time I'll copy and paste that around and I'll have several of these. So now we should look in here and find, well, some of the things that we need. We've got two hydrogen bottles and we've got our steel plate, but we don't have anything else. Well, where did those go? Well, we can go take a look over here. Tim, Inven, and this is that physical gun object thing that we want. So this is all of the tools and it will show that we have an automatic rifle and an angle grinder, but we don't have the level three versions and it's not yet assembling them because why? Oh, I know why. <laughs> so this is another thing to be aware of. I told it to keep welders, angle grinders and hand drills in this cargo container. 
But if I don't tell it exactly how many, then as far as it's concerned, it's only the ones that we currently have. If I tell it I wanna keep one of them, then that increases the quota. So you can see down here, welder three item now has a quota of one and it's assembling one automatically. As soon as that's done assembling, it'll throw it in that cargo container. And now we have two of them. It's sometimes a little overzealous, but that's okay. It'll keep one in here and we'll have another one somewhere else in the base. Now the other components, it isn't filling in because components over here, no, here. Oh, here we go. So this container is also trying to keep 100 components in it. And this one over here is trying to keep 100 components in it, but you'll notice it has the P1. So this is taking priority. Now, if that's an issue, we can go in here and tell this that its inventory is P1. And then they'll share. But I think instead, I'm going to tell this one not to be P1. Now it should split between all of them, and there we go. Now we have an equal portion of each item in here and over there. And as it builds more, it'll fill this up. Well, I think that just about covers everything there is to know. <laughs> Maybe not quite. There's always a few little things. And if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, don't forget that there's an excellent guide linked from the Tim page itself. And it just covers every little tiny detail. Definitely check that out. Also, feel free to drop by the Discord server for Epic Tech. You'll find a link in the description down below. And if you think of something else that you would love to see covered in a video, video feedback on the Discord server is a great place to leave that kind of feedback because I can directly chat with you and I keep a really close eye on that specific channel. So now is the time to go and if you haven't already watched the original video to get all the details about things that have not changed in the new version or head on to your own world and play with it. I guarantee you will enjoy Tim. Tim is a great script. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button and check out my Let's Play series where I get into a lot of the specifics. So as I always say, I'll see you next time on Epic Tech.